Hey guys, this is Alex from GT Games. I'm here to do this video to show you a little bit about uh, some information when you're going to buy your first racing simulator. We have uh, a couple of these in stock that we use on a rental basis in Ottawa, Ontario that we rent out to everybody. But um, anyways, so we've had a lot of experience. We've got some, some learnings that we want to share about uh, what you need to know when you're buying your first racing simulator. Hey guys, so we moved on over here. So we've got a couple of these different wheels set up on display for you to see. Uh, if you're anything like me, I used to be a racing simulator noob until I found out and did some research online, which is a little bit what we're doing right now, just to tell you um, what, what these different wheels do. So these are all different Thrustmaster wheels. The Thrustmaster T80, the T300, and a Logitech G G29. Um, there's different ratings like on the force feedback rating, what the servo base looks like, the quality of the pedals, all these different things that are going through your mind when you're trying to buy your first racing sim. Uh, don't worry, we're going to cover all that in the video. The best place to start is really talking about the, the different levels of racing simulator setups that you can get. You've got the, the beginner, the intermediate, and the advanced setups. In this video, I'm going to show you firsthand a little bit about the beginner and the intermediate setups, and then I'll do a little bit of some screenshots and stuff like that to show you what a pro, pro setup looks like. So if we're going to jump straight into the beginner setup, uh, which you're going to be looking at here with the T80, this is your one of your Thrustmaster early entry level wheels that you can play. This works on the, the PlayStation 4, PS5, or the PC, so it's pretty flexible. Uh, the T80, as well as the T150, they don't use true servo base uh, force feedback. They've got a little bit more of a, a bungee system or a hybrid system. Uh, and what that means is that the, the resistance inside the wheel is gonna be a little bit weaker, it's gonna be less responsive, and there might be some dead zones in playing. Um, that's not to say that it's gonna be a bad setup, but it is just a little bit more economical, and it's a great way just to get into it. Another thing you can see here is on the T80 and the T150s, the pedal sets only include two pedals. There's no shifter with it, it's just the wheel, the servo base, and a simple, very arcade style uh, two pedal system. Uh, to get you one of these things, it's going to cost you anywhere between 100 to 250 bucks. Um, with that, you can just mount it onto your desk, so you can play at home right on your desk without needing any special equipment. Um, you can upgrade these things a little bit slightly, so once you do get started into an entry level position, you can start upgrading adding pieces onto it. Uh, stuff like you know like, like shifter holders an actual shifter box handbrakes stuff like that so that's all part of the wheelhouse of the of the early entry level moving on to the intermediate uh, the intermediate level is what we start out here and this is actually what we rent out uh, with games to go on a local basis in Ottawa so we actually do have a number of these things in stock we call this intermediate level package where it includes a T300 as well as a racing bucket seat so you can see I've actually got one set up over here I've got a full T300 intermediate setup that we use as a rental uh, you got your play seat bucket seat which is the racing seat you got the t300 full force feedback racing wheel hooked up to a playstation console that you can play on a screen uh, this does have the el eligibility to be able to use vr with the playstation 5 or on your pc so it's uh it's definitely a lot of fun popping, ba popping back over here to the features what's great about these intermediate level ones is that they the force feedback servo on these guys is a lot stronger compared to the beginner levels. So these are actually a little bit over the minimum requirement for most games in terms of the strength of the servo. Uh, that means you're going to feel a lot of the precision and a lot of the force feedback when you're making turns and going over bumps. Uh, the experience is definitely uh, it's a lot it's a lot better compared to the beginner package. Uh, the other thing to know is that if you do go into an intermediate and you, you do buy something a little bit bigger, it's going to last with you for a lot longer than the beginner stuff would. Um, so you might actually be saving money based on spending more up front, but it's going to last you for a lot longer and have a lot more fun on the Nvidia package. Okay, and then moving into the professional level, uh, you're basically always going to be playing on a PC. You're not really going to be playing on any consoles like the Xbox or PlayStation. Uh, professional setups can start anywhere between five thousand to ten thousand dollars and go all the way up to forty grand, uh, even more if, if you're really looking at it. The, the pro setups feature everything from, you know, everything you need to race. It's got a, a direct servo motor versus a belt driven servo motor like on the other ones. It's got, um, it's got rumble packs in the seats. It can even sway and provide G-force when you're playing. It's got uh, professional level shifters, pedals, racing wheel, interchangeable parts, the whole thing, you name it. You can upgrade literally every single aspect of a professional setup and, uh, and race just like the pros do. Professional race car drivers use pro sim setups when they're racing in the off season. It is super realistic. Uh, you don't get much better than that. All right, so now let's start talking about a little bit of the definitions that you want to know when you're going to be buying a racing simulator setup. Uh, one of the first things that everything usually broadcasts and says on here is the force feedback rating. So force feedback is literally 
how much resistance the wheel itself has when you play against it. So right now this is just in, in idle mode, it's just sitting here, it's pretty easy to turn. But as soon as you're playing into a game and you're, you're, you're taking a corner or you hit a bump or whatever, the force feedback is literally going to gauge how strong that wheel is going to fight back with you and how realistic it feels. All right, so the next thing is the servo base. What is a servo base when you're looking at getting a racing simulator set up? The servo base is actually the, the back housing unit over here behind the wheel. The wheel attaches to the servo base. And the servo base actually has the motor and all the electronics that hook up to the game that you're playing. The servo base will have different levels of strengths on the actual motor itself, but also different ways that that servo motor is connected to the wheel, which I'm going to get into in a second. Another quick term is uh, what is a quick release system? A quick release system is a feature that some wheels have that you can actually interchange the wheel itself. So depending on which level of, uh, of a servo wheel you're getting, some of them are easy to, to take and pop out the wheel to interchange for different styles, different sizes, and different features. If you're going down into the more early entry level ones, those might not have the, the quick release system to be able to change the wheel. But as soon as you start getting to the intermediate and up, they usually do have the feature to be able to change and replace the wheel itself, which is the quick release system. Okay, and then lastly, I just want to talk about the two different uh, types of servo motors that can exist inside your servo base. Uh, there's the old technology, which is a brushed motor. Those are usually uh, slower, older, and clunkier, and cheaper. So that's why you're going to see those in the intermediate and the entry-level ones. Whereas if you're getting into high-end racing simulator equipment, you're looking at brushless servo motors, which are brand new technology. Uh, they're brushless, they're, they're more efficient, they're more precise, and they, they provide a lot more feedback power. Okay, now getting into the different levels of the internal wheel technologies. So as I was talking about a little bit before, you got your servo base, but what's really going on inside here? So there's different levels of the servo base technology that all um, have to do with the, how, how strong it's going to be, how realistic it feels, and, and just the, the quality of the build. So if you're looking at some early entry level technologies, we're going to look at the T80 over here. This uses a bungee system. Uh, this means there's no active uh, force feedback with any motors. It's literally just a, a bungee pull system. So as soon as you turn the wheel, you're feeling resistance with, with a bungee pull system inside the servo base. You move on to the next one, which I'm calling the gear system. The Logitech G29 is a really great example of the gear system. So this is using a motor that's connected by gears to the wheel. Uh, this is sort of your next level up after the bungee. It's great. The only thing that's, that's sort of not so great about it is that when you're, when you're turning and you feel the gears, you can actually feel the gears clicking with each other. And it sort of provides um, a less realistic feel because you can feel the, the granularity of the gears as they're grinding with each other when you're, when you're experiencing that force feedback. Then you get into a mixed belt and hybrid system, which is using um, a little bit of, of gears as well as a little bit of bungee system in there to sort of smooth it out. So you get the both, uh, best of both worlds. You get the nice strong feedback from the gears, but then you get a little bit more of a, of a smooth, realistic feel from the bungees. And that's what they call a hybrid system. Uh, Thrustmaster actually just came out with a brand new wheel called the T248, which I have up in a box over here. It's not shown, but I'll show you in a, in a picture. The T248 is a really great example of a hybrid system that is using both the, the gears and the pulley. Okay, getting into the intermediate servo base, which is this guy over here, the T300, or the box one over here. They use what's called a, uh, a dual belt system. So rather than it being gears or bungees, it's actually a motor that's attached from a, with a rubber belt to the wheel itself. Um, it's, a, it's a strong dual belt system, so it doesn't slip. It feels really realistic, and since it's a rubber belt, you don't feel that granularity. It's really a nice, smooth transition. Um, I would say that the intermediate, the T300s, is my go-to if I were to get a first racing wheel. Uh, these things are going to cost anywhere between 500 to 700 bucks, but um, it's, it's the best, hands down, the best experience you're going to get from an intro wheel. All right, and lastly, you're going to see the direct drive servo motors. So a direct drive servo motor is different from all the rest because it's actually literally the racing wheel itself attached directly to the motor. There's no interchanging parts. There's no gears. There's no bungees. There's no anything. It's just straight shaft with the, uh, with the wheel attached to the motor. The, motor. the motors are huge. They're super powerful. The force feedback rating on those things, these are, these are what the pros use, the professional setups use the, the direct servo, the direct drives. And, uh, and they basically, they consume the most power, uh, but they're the most expensive and the most realistic. Uh, provided down in the link below, I have a screenshot for our introductory and intermediate uh, levels of the Thrustmaster wheels. You can see that they range all the way from the T80 to the T150 up to the T300 and the TGT. These I'm considering as a Thrustmaster intro and intermediate level wheels. 
If you want to read more and see a little bit more about the specs on those, you can see the, the PDF that I've included down at the bottom. All right, so real quick, I'm going to go over a couple of the games that you can play with your racing simulator setup. Us ourselves, we use the T300s as these rentals, and uh, they hook up to our PlayStation 5s that we offer for in-home uh, rentals in Ottawa, Ontario. Some of the games that we like to use is uh, Gran Turismo Sport, which is uh, my personal favorite on the PlayStation. You got the, the Need for Speed Heat, as well as Wreckfest. There's a whole list of games that you can get, which I'm going to provide in the link below. Um, there's tons of uh, racing simulator games that are going to work on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Hey guys, this is Alex from GT Games. <laughs> I hope you learned something in this video. I went over a couple of things, some terms that you need to know when you're going to buy your first racing simulator, as well as some of the potential setups and what those things might look like, same, same with some of the costs. If you like what you saw, subscribe in the video down below. I'll see you next time.